Steam, GOG Galaxy, Uplay, Origin and so forth are primarily game stores. Their built-in library managers are rather basic. And anyway, the problem is first you have to know which game to play so that you can open the client on which you have the game. Or you just, however you do that, pick one of the clients and then you look in their library managers for a game, but what features do they really have to help you pick out a game? Let me show you how this could be done. In this manager, whenever you select a game, you will see a screenshot right away, if you have screenshots. And you can make it go full screen just by hovering here. And if you click here, you see your list of games in the form of screenshots. Why is that not a feature in the other clients? Well, it is in this client, and they don't have to really implement it now, because they would still lack the ability to play games from other clients. This manager easily unites games from all clients under one roof, and even your manually installed games. Steam games are supported right out of the box. They will show up in this list automatically. For other game clients or manually installed games, you have to drag um, the respective root folder in here and on next start the games will be in here. And while this thing scans for games, you can use it because that happens in the background. Now, let's see what management features do we have. For example, there are tags. You can... <laughs> oops. You can... Um, create tags and assign them to games and when you click a tag only the games that have this tag will show up and if you select several games then only games will show up that all have this tag you can also say I do not want games with this tag to show up then you click a few more times and this thing becomes red which is the not filter but apart from these uh, tags, which you can also group and subgroup and collapse. There are the name search tags, which are like entering a name up here, for example, Gauntlet. As you can see, this filter box, as opposed to the one of Steam or other clients, I guess, um, it searches for all uh, substrings that you enter up here. They all have to occur in the name. That makes searching quite easy. You can also say, I don't want this, so use an exclamation point. And the same thing can be done by just creating name search tags. So let's search for truck, but not for simulator. And you can add these other tags too if you want, not that this makes sense at the moment. Then there are the Steam tags, which for some ridiculous reason are not available in the Steam library itself. The warning, these are outdated and not uh, available for every game, only for the majority. And then we have these tags like owned and installed. Why owned? Well, because this manager shows all games the local Steam client sh uh, knows, not just the ones that you own. So let's see, which ones does it show that I do not own? Well, it's quite a bunch. That is accumulated over time. What's installed? What's renamed? Huh? Renamed? Yeah, well you can re rename uh, games. Let me show you. Sorted by name. And scroll down to some that are renamed. Oh, these, for example. The Blackwell games. Originally, the name would be this. That's not nice. So, just rename them. And then they look like this. What else do we have? Some other things that are renamed. Oh, this. The XCOM games. Primary example. Also, you have to keep in mind that this nicely sorted order is upheld when you look at the original um, names. So, the order here would be completely different. You wouldn't be able to play them in order or see them temporarily sorted. But sorting, what else do we have? We have by name, length of name, length of installa installation path, and so forth. So many things, even random. I mean, it's really a simple feature. Why don't they have that in their clients? It is so simple to implement. Well, here it is. You can sort randomly. And the random sort order 
is also remembered so next time you start this thing you will have the same random order except if you explicitly decide to re-roll the dice. Let's activate all columns that are available at once so you can see what this looks like. That's quite a lot I would say. Now let's do something useful with them. Let's say I want to see by date last run. Oops. By date last run. But not in the 100% resolution, because I also want to make use of secondary level sorters. So let's say in half years distance and only show me the top few results of uh, of this uh, sorting. Oh, I see there's a bug in there. Oh, I'm gonna fix that later. Then uh, let's add the duration run into the mix, which makes it really interesting. So these are my top games going by the duration plate in half year's distance. And what client can you do that? And it's quite interesting as a search result, I would say. But, um, so what if I want to sort by installation size? Or amount of files, that's a funny one. 77,000 files for Unturned, which is a great game, by the way. Now, install size. If I want to clean up one of my drives, the install size alone might not do it, because I want to see games only on that drive. So let's add the installation path and then do something crazy, right mouse button, only the drive. Uh, the crazy part is that there are many um, context menu f um, options here. For example, let's search, uh, let's uh, look at the name in a different way. Namely, in the form of Reddit forum links. So if you have several columns here, you can just select some text here, copy it into the clipboard and paste it right away. There are two extra spaces back here, so they will uh, be printed underneath each other instead of becoming one long line. Okay, this is going too much into detail. You see there are things here that are completely crazy. You'd really have to explore this and what you can do with them. What else do we have? Um, for example, the highlighting here, you see the color gray and white usually in Steam means it is installed. But here it means other things. For example, I own this, or this is renamed, or changed since last save of the database, because that's what you have to do if you want to do changes, if you're doing changes in the program. Um, you can also quit without saving in case you did something odd. <laughs> And you can also do this. Do not filter at all. So if I activate a, a few tags here, then uh, this will not have the usual filter effect. Instead, I will just see the gray and white coloring respectively. Though currently there's no result. Well, let's do this. Yeah, there's something. So you can really do weird things here regarding sorting and filtering. Things that the other clients are miles, if not light years, away from. And this thing, you can have it right now. It's a 2 megabyte download, no install, um, except if you don't have Java. <laughs> and um, yeah, run it and then you see your Steam games right away, plus the screenshots. But there are lots of other things that you can do in here. For example, as you can see I have this in here, um, because this is not quite the first take of this video. <coughs> um, then I click here and say load and back just where I want it to be. The right sorting, the right columns, all settings, even the tags, everything. Even the text up here in the filter boxes. By the way, this is the filter box for the games and this is the filter box for the texts. So, what nice things can you do? For example, you can enter a few 64-bit um, Steam IDs here. This is uh, well, that's person IDs, and then you can have the program figure out uh, which 
uh, of you guys own the same games and you get a list for each group of guys sorted by amount of games that you have in common so that's great for LAN parties. Maybe you have noticed that uh, in my list I also have uh, the price that I actually paid when I bought a game. How did I get that in here? Well, one of the ways, of course, would be to tediously edit, enter them via the properties editor. But, of course, it would be more comfortable to just import them and this program can do that. You can import all your games that you have bought via the Steam store into this program, including, what do we have? The transaction method, not quite important, the tax paid, who cares, the transaction ID can be interesting sometimes. The money you paid, the undiscounted price, also interesting, and the uh, discount at the time. Uh, the discount amount, the discount percentage I meant. And the price per hour, oh that's an interesting one. Since I know what I paid, and I also know how long I played it, why not sort by the price per hour? What's at the top? You guessed it. Skyrim. You're not downloading it. Right now? What's wrong with you? Waiting for more features. Okay, what else do we have? <laughs> well, once you have imported all the stuff from Steam, you might be interested to use it in your Excel or whatever banking software. So you can export it here via this feature. Here we go. And more and more and more stuff. Open the PC Gaming Wiki page of a game. Go to the Steam Store page. Or go to your Steam review, uh, if you already made a review for the respective game. There's so much stuff here, it would be stupid for me to try to explain this all in one video that I don't eventually um, have to scrap again. So let's stop here. Go to gamelibrarymanager.com, download this thing, give it a run, and after a while you have to realize this is how you can rediscover PC gaming for you because having all games in one library with this amount of filter and search features that makes you the master again of your game library instead of making you the slave to five game stores and what have you okay thy will be done download this thing and um, be happy. <laughs>